All right, everyone. Well, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Friday Masterclass, where today it's going to be all about painting with sound and specifically painting with harmonics via the spectral frequency display using some old, uh, not old, using some new songs uh, from a dear friend of mine <clears throat> who um, I have featured many times on the stream here my oft collaborator and friend Fred Fett Fung. Um, before I get into that, just randomly, I had an eye, I, just a little levity first. I had an eyebrow hair seconds ago that was poking into my eye. And I'm, I can't see at the moment. Like it was darting me in the eye. This is just, you know, men getting older. Uh, you know, eyebrows and the eyeball. I mean, what the human body is amazing and gross. Anyway, I, I got it. I don't like to like pluck those. I mean, I do. <laughs> I do stuff with my eyebrows, but um, let me rephrase that. That came out wrong. Uh, I do get I do. There's a lot of grooming going on. Nope. Manscaping to my eyebrows. But gosh, this hurts and I can't see out of my left eye. So I apologize. I'm all disoriented. OK. So we're going to work on a track today from my friend Fred Fung. And uh, obviously, you can see I'm not my usual self because I just recently learned uh, that he passed away. And we've known each other 30 years. And we've collaborated on so many tracks and done so many things. My publishing company, I started with Fred. Uh, and it's it's got me shaken. So I'm going to do a little stream another time. I've been trying to figure out what to do. I'm not, I don't really post a lot to Instagram, do like a tribute post or something. I don't, I don't know. It's a dear friend, 30 years collaborator. Uh, we've worked together so much on so many things and you could probably tell if you've watched me, I'm, I'm, I'm a little shaken. So anyway, um, one thing that I thought would be kind of cool if you wanted, if you were so inclined, I'm not about going to like plug, but it's a record that he and I did. We actually did this about 18 years ago. Um, I didn't wind up releasing it until 2010. And unfortunately at the time, the digital distributor that I was using to do this, it, it got listed incorrectly. So the artist name, instead of having both of our names and searchable by that, the artist name is my name and his name as if it were we were one person. So it's an album called Music to Design By. I've referenced some of the tracks before. I'm just going to cut over to my screen real quickly here. Um, you know, his uh, I, you know, his family will will <laughs> what little publishing royalties there are, they, they they'll get them, but it's a little older, but it's got some really amazing stuff. And the thing about Fred and I, all of this stuff was played and performed and all of the craziness that goes on in these tracks is all from processing. I mean, he would often loop things, but they were real time, real performances, uh, nothing sequenced. That's the key. And just lots of different analog and digital processing. My favorite track on here is this one called Peak Dark Blip Clave. And all of these songs, it's a, it's a continuous uh, hour and three minutes. So everything kind of bleeds into one another. They crossfade naturally into one another. There's some really cool ones in here. Uh, a lot of different sounds. Um, everything from sort of, you know, he was he was a Chinese hammer dulcimer master among many other instruments. Uh, Yang Qin is what that's referred to. So you can hear a lot of like Yang Qin in here. Uh, there's a lot of sort of gamelan style. He's originally from Hong Kong. So there's you see this one track Canto Gamelan is really interesting. And I sort of integrated this with lots of record scratching and me playing the drums. Sometimes he's playing drums. There's a, you know, a barrage of different percussion and acoustic instrumentation and digital instrumentation. Anyway, you can find it on Spotify, Apple Music, all that stuff. I, again, I'm not trying to plug it, but um, this was the first official record that we did and sort of put out together when we were young. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I'm going to miss you, man. He was uh, he was like no other. So what we're going to do today is um, I went back to the archives and as mentioned before, you know, <clears throat> you know, I've talked a lot about the Beatles get back. And if you know any of the history, so Peter Jackson, you know, uncovered this 150 hours 
of, uh, you know, unreleased sort of Nagra tape recordings from those about 21 days of sessions. So I started going through the archives that I have of Fred. Uh, and the last time I saw him was 2019, pre-pandemic. But uh, I think the last time I grabbed some of the archives, we would basically do like a file dump and share things together, his latest works. Um, he gave me something like 2,000 songs. And that's not being hyperbolic. 2,000. Uh, and that's at a minimum. They were probably closer to three or four, but some of them I wound up dumping. Some of them were sort of variations on a theme. And this is really common for him because he would start to do the kind of music that he authored and, and came up with. A lot of it was ostinato, groove-based, and then he'd modify bits and pieces and change tempo and speed. And again, tons of manipulation from real-time performance. And a lot of it done in the spectral frequency display to create something new and different and really wacky in many cases. So we're going to look at, I would show you the archives, but a lot of them are sort of inappropriately titled. Um, just the nature that was his kind of humor. But um, we're going to look at a couple today and kind of show you a different way to, as the title suggests, paint with sound and how to um, use the paintbrush in Audition to isolate specific parts of a track and then use the multi-track to sort of stack and build things up layer style to create and then use effects to kind of create just something a little different. Um, I don't know where this is going to go, to be honest. I, um, <laughs> I'm shaking. And uh, I don't know what else to say about that. So, emotional me. That's what you're getting today. It's not super polished. In any case, always a couple of uh, couple of uh, uh, shouts here. I can't, I can't even speak. Uh, Sean Cassell, Tim, Clever Devlin, Eric Fries, Gino Marbella, Jack Watson, Axel Kuhn. All right, Nazim, Rick Adams, Eugene, Bliss Art. All right, Biola, Reverb Mike, always nice to see you. Thank you for the condolences. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for hanging in. <laughs> My pants make sound, corduroy. Yes, I'm wearing, uh, I had to change them, actually. I was wearing these funny shorts earlier, and they were kind of doing the because Fridays are leg day and quads are popping. But um, it was actually irritating me. I was hearing it on the boom, and I thought, wow, was it, really? Was that noisy? Evidently so. All right. So one of the things I'm going to do here, uh, going a little, making a couple quick changes. So as always, because we're going to be dealing with um, some stereo audio, I just removed the, uh, the noise reduction from my laptop here, which for some reason was firing at 100% CPU before the stream. So that's always a good thing. Uh, and I'm going to go into headphones to work with this stuff. So once again, for those of you, the uninitiated, uh, this is what's called the spectral frequency display. So this is, uh, you can access this view uh, up here in Audition and this little button. Also, we have this little divider bar in the UI, which, you know, if you're new, you've never seen it before, maybe you've not noticed. And this actually allows you to toggle between the waveform display and the spectral display. So it's actually always there. Uh, you can you can choose how you actually want you know if you want half and half you could technically leave the view like that actually maybe we'll maybe we'll work that way today that could be fun I don't generally work this way but yeah maybe usually because I want all the screen real estate the reason being and I'll go back to full for just a second is that um, this is going to allow you to sort of identify um, what's going on in this file I'm going to play this back for you in just a couple seconds here we have our frequency along the uh, vertical axis. So you can see I'm kind of uh, viewing this linearly at the moment from zero hertz. Now this is a 44.1 file, 44.1K. So highest frequency, 44,100 hertz. Nyquist limit, 22,050. So this goes up to 22K here. And again, this was this is a 32-bit um, a wave, but whatever he was processing this through, he did a lot of um, like frequency cutoff stuff, and you'll hear this. He was always, you know, there's little transients that sneak through now and again. But he did stuff where he would band limit and frequency limit things, again, intentionally, because often he would take something and maybe purposefully roll off everything above 10K because then he would add something else that would add additional elements above 10K to kind of fill that space. Fred was 
truly someone who painted with sound. And a lot of it was really bizarre. And often, um, I heard this great interview with Matt Berry. It wasn't an interview, it was uh, What's In My Bag. Just the other day, he was at uh, Amoeba Records in LA and he was talking about a band that I love, which I've been listening to a lot called Cluster. It's funny, it's just, I mentioned it was like Susie and the Banshees recently. Now I'm back on Cluster and Harmonia and sort of uh, German kraut rock, space rock from the early 70s. This is, this is the mood I've been in lately, which is very Fred. And uh, he talked about this one album by the band Cluster, which is very experimental, very early electronic stuff, space rock. And again, he's like, uh, they said, what does is, what is this album sound like? He goes, this is... It sounds like what nightmares are made of. <laughs> so Fred had a lot of that stuff. Um, he definitely did for a variety of reasons. And uh, this one is not that, though. This one is, it's slow, but, um, and, well, let's just play it. I'm going to play a little bit of this. If you take a look here, you can see that it's kind of in, it's in two movements. So he has this first movement here, which is sort of differently tempoed, then has kind of a, a, a segue which is um, a little delay. And then he goes into sort of the, the B section. And then there's some variation there. And then he would drop out some of the percussion and some of the effects. And you can see that here. Um, in fact, I'm going to grab my paintbrush just really quickly to illustrate. So you can see we've got this kind of some sort of sweeping filter happening here, right? And then that, that drops out. And then the filter's gone. And you're just hearing sort of the raw elements of the drums and the the instrumentation. So it's got a lot of different movements. So let's take a let's take a quick listen. So we're going to work on the slower movement today. So let's hear what that sounds like. Yeah. So again, basically an ostinato groove. And then each section different um, mallet percussion and bells. I'm just gonna skip ahead here. do a little synth in this too, something like, oh, I don't think you're hearing that actually. You will momentarily. So all the deep percussion is gone and it's just bells. So we were talking about Gamelon before, again, that song Canto Gamelon on that record I mentioned. Um, he had a whole set of gamelan percussion, which is very, very dark and creepy. And again, he would record it, slow it down, process it, speed it back up to regular speed, do something else, slow it back down. So if you know gamelan music, I'm curious if anybody does, uh, you're like, oh, those, those sound familiar, but there's something also kind of a little dark and creepy about it. back to the theme, to the head. And then there's a couple other variations in here. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm going to assemble a short piece of this. It's, it's six minutes, so we're not gonna use all six. I'm gonna cut together a couple of the different sections, all right? And then we're going to start processing those individually using the paintbrush, okay? And then kind of spacing them out. One other thing I wanted to point out here. So uh, if you're ever um, overdubbing or working with sound, now here's the thing. These are what we would call non-tempered instruments. <laughs> 
And it's particularly the Gamelon ones. There's no way to sort of change the pitch on many. Some of them, the, the, the dulcimer, of course, yes, you can, you can tune it a la temper tuning. But there's other, there's other things going, there's different drums that are tuned and it's, you know, it's not temper tuning. So oftentimes it's hard to find the exact key. Sometimes it's sort of in between a note via X number of cents. So a little, a little um, cool and somewhat unknown feature of the frequency analysis panel is that it also does real-time pitch analysis. So I, just where I stopped right here, just randomly, so again, so you couldn't hear me playing this before. So, you know, if you have a good ear, you can see and you can listen, see, you can listen, and it, it gives you a real-time display of overall musical note. I think we actually changed that, uh, that text some time ago. I don't remember that being phrased that way, but that's very good. So this is telling, this is kind of the resonant, the overall resonance is a C sharp. Now, on the left channel, it's like plus 42 cents. Part of that is also because there's a sweep, a frequency sweep going on, and there's some delay. Um, right channel, minus four, minus four cents, okay? And it gives you the actual frequency, sort of pr you know, prominent frequency at the fundamental here, 35 hertz. Obviously, that's super low. You're not hearing that. You're hearing the harmonics of that. But case in point, um, I draw, drew uh, a couple other markers here. We skip over to this little section here. And this is where, again, this becomes really useful. You'll see that it's saying, well, actually, it's D sharp 5 minus 7 cents, okay? Uh, C sharp plus 12 cents. So it, in fact, and in fact, this is D sharp, not even D. Uh, it's modulating. It's moving a little bit. But the overall uh, pitch, and by the way, if I scrub through this, you'll see that these are, these are in fact, moving. And here's another one here. So I just stopped. Again, showing me sort of C sharp, C sharp. So it is in fact C sharp, and he's doing a, what's known as a root five motion. Or for those of you who remember, uh, solfege from uh, elementary school, um, do sol do, one five one. Do 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 do. Okay, so um, really, really kind of common in this style of music too. Okay. So I've already created um, a blank multi-track, and this, this particular track is called Intergalactic Ching. We're going to call it IGC main track. Let's just change the track color. And thank you for that, Crystal. Oh, you're very kind. Resonant Basso Profundo. Very good there. <laughs> Reverb mic, like Phil Spector before the big hair, a wall of sound. Yes, and <laughs> some similarities, some absolute not similarities to PS, but yes, uh, he was very into that wall of sound. By the way, just to give you another idea, so this is another one that we might work on. He's very into these sweeping frequencies here. This one's called Black Bean Days Groove Slow, uh, because there is, in fact, Black, Black Bean Days Groove fast, and then there's all these other different variations of those. Here's a little taste of this one. So you just heard that. Here's this. And uh, this one, which we might get to at the end, it's called burns matic Slow C Major. Where am I on this one? into this sort of harmonic building. And as I've been listening to a lot of this sort of space rock, you could tell me in the chat, anybody into this? You into this kind of, I mean, there's a market for it. I'm, you know, one of our last projects that we didn't finish, uh, we'd started in uh, 2019 pre-pandemic was kind of 
we've done a lot of these collabs, and I was saying, you know, you have all these tracks which are just really, they're just kind of ambient soundscapes. And sometimes they go somewhere, like the IGC one. Sometimes they really don't. Sometimes they're just, it's just a groove. There's like a slight beginning and end, but basically it's just, you're kind of in this one space. Can anybody dig that? I mean, there's all those channels on YouTube that are just, you know, lo-fi chill, and frankly, you know, they're not doing much more. You know, I'm, I am seldom impressed with those because one, they're very derivative, and, uh, oh, I'm edgy today, and, uh, yeah, I mean, they're just derivative, like, yeah, okay, it's like, Again, a lot of a lot of high end rolled off on some sampled beat, and some sampled electric piano. A couple times mine, I've heard my own samples used in the, some of those, which is great. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know. Tell me if anybody's into this. Maybe not. You may say no. Hot takes with Jason. Thank you. Groovy. Thank you, Cody. Hey, Misha. Okay, so let's start editing some of this together here. So we're gonna come over and let's find a little section that we can cut. Now he's got a little intro bit here. I can tack that on separately, which I think is what I will do. So let me grab this. And in fact, I'm even going to, um, I will grab that little bit of echoey bit here. All right, so we're gonna copy this to new. And I'm gonna do a little sort of destructive slow fade on this. Do a very, very small fade on this. And we'll call this uh, Did I just create a folder? Yes. So we'll call this IGC intro. All right, let's insert this into the multi-track. Let's stick it up here, okay. All right, back to the file. And we don't need like a super long section. I think it's virtually similar. There's some, obviously there's some variation here. We probably wanna get one full crest of that uh, of that swept loop. So let's just take a listen to see what, we, what we're playing with here. Okay, so eight bars, basically, okay? How did I know that's eight bars? I was counting. <laughs> All right, so here's our, uh, here's where we want to end up. Here's where we want to start. Zoom in, make sure I'm grabbing the beginnings tightly, nicely. And the end, so that we have a nice clean loop. All right, and let's take a listen to that. Listening for continuity here. Perfectly seamless. Practically perfect in every way. Copy to new. Save. And this is IGC uh, section one. Okay. Going to the right place. Okay. And we will insert this into the multi track. Snap it right to the edge there. Okay. Now, just real quick for those again new to audition, you know, uh, we don't have a looping engine anymore you can still loop clips. So if we wanted this to be another eight bars, for instance, I just need to enable the loop function here. Just right click, control click on the clip. And then I can drag this out. Whoops. I can drag it out and extend it for another 
another eight bars. And you see I've got my snapping on there, so it lets me snap to the edge, okay? It's not adjusting tempo, it's not doing anything like that, it's just extending it another eight bars. So we'll see, I might, you know, maybe we'll just do eight bars of that. Let's go into the B section here. Same thing. All right. Oh, did I already make a marker for this? I think I did. IGC section two. Then we're going to have the breakdown. Let's go to the breakdown here. We just want four, four, and four. All right. So something like this. Okay. So an eight bar breakdown, but only eight bars. Okay, let's copy that to a new one. Call this IGC break. Oh, I did that all caps. All right. And let's drag these in. Yeah, now technically, I maybe I'll put these on separate tracks too. IGC break. That should be continuous. <laughs> And then we'll do one last, one last cut up here of the, because remember we can, we can now move these around wherever we want them to go. So let's do the busier section. Yeah, so right here. Section three, IGC, section three. All of this to get to the painting. And you're like, where's the painting already? I know, I gotta do a little, little pre-production here first. And the ending. Oops. It's 
hard to see. So this is another nice thing too. Sometimes, especially when you have this kind of poly timbral stuff happening, it's hard to see exactly where um, where the downbeat is just because of the waveform complexity. So I know that this is approximately it, and this will allow me, you know, a little uh, a little more leeway in terms of finding that on the waveform itself. Yeah, and you can see it's kind of right, right in the middle here. Right there. Yeah. Let's, come to, let's see. Let's hear what that sounds like. Yeah. It's a little messy. So hold on, let me see if we can clean that up. Copy this to new and let's do a quick little zoom in and if we smooth nice and this is where you know I could add a little gong or some kind of percussive element to that to give it a little more force since it's the end um, let's do that IGC and riff. Okay. And add this down here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to shrink up these tracks. I just realized I might wind up putting these on individuals, but we won't worry about that for right now. I'm going to add a couple of additional tracks. Let's add another there. Add another there. Okay. And let's start with this IGC section one. Okay. So one of the things that, again, you can do is you can use the paintbrush to isolate specific frequencies. And you can do this in a number of ways. So let's say that we want to first sort of isolate that sweep. All right. I'm going to take the paintbrush. I'm going to come down here. And I'm just going to start to paint. That wasn't perfect. Along the sweeping pattern, right? Now, much like a wah pedal, this is as we're moving through frequency, you know, we're, we're essentially turning lower frequencies off and higher frequencies on. So when we get up to you know, the limit here is about 7K, we're no longer hearing anything that isn't selected. So it's going to sound very thin. It's going to have a different characteristic altogether, but a very unique one at the same time. So if you listen to this, when you're in this mode, this actually lets you hear the selected frequencies as they're isolated. And you can see on the frequency display, Now, I like that, but actually, I don't want, I don't want the, percuss uh, the percussion to really come through here. So I'm actually going to start the sweep a little bit higher, right? About starting at around 1K. Now, by the way, I don't have to go in the pattern of the actual sweep that we see. I'm doing that essentially to create a similar sort of gap because we're going to be able to overlay this. And I do end it going into the sort of bass frequency. So let's hear that sound. That might sound weird. And again, you can see exactly what's happening on the frequency display here, right? <laughs> I like that. Okay. So now what? Great. You made a selection. What do you do? Well, you've seen me just do this all this time. You can copy this section, this selection, this painted selection to a new file. And you think that is, what is that? Is that real? 
Well, yes, if you go into the waveform display, that's what it looks like, okay? Now, why does it look like that? Well, because we've essentially painted out all the other frequencies that we don't want. All the music is still there, but we're only revealing those frequencies. And remember, I didn't say this at the beginning. If you're going, I don't quite understand how this works. Amplitude, color is amplitude. So the closer the color is to orange, the louder the amplitude. The closer the color is to black, the quieter, or in this case, silence. And you know, if you, you can change the resolution of these so you can see them with greater detail. But one of the things you'll note is you can see that there's a gradient happening, right? For all my, my visual friends here, right? From, from bright yellow, did I say closer it is to orange? Yellow, actually. Yellow, almost white. So the louder the amplitude, the closer it's going to be to yellowish white. Yellow down into orange, down into red, down into purple, down into indigo, violet, into black. So that gradient, this is, you know, this is, you're basically seeing audio frequency fading here or harmonic fade, all right? So that's why when it's black, it's silent. So we're not hearing any of those other frequencies. So this is now a completely isolated sweep of section one. So we're going to save that as such. IGC sweep section one. Okay. All right. And we're going to do a couple of these. Now, let's go back to, let's do section two. So this one I want to do maybe just a, a selection of the percussion and really focus on the lower frequencies. Now I can do this with the paintbrush. Okay. And by the way, you'll see we have two settings. We have size and opacity. The opacity is always set to 50%. So if you want to essentially include all of the data, you need to, because you see if I go real fast, you see it's like a little trajectory, right? It's like 50% opacity. But if you hover, you go slowly, it's essentially 100%. So this gives you, again, some, some differences in sound and overlay quality or capability. So if I just select along the bottom here, whoops. By the way, I can also just extend this once I draw it. I don't even have to redraw the whole thing. If I hold down uh, Command or Control, oh no, that erased it. Hold on, Shift allows me to add? Yes, Shift. Um, I can add to my already made selection. So again, maybe we have a little bit lighter opacity along the top. Let's listen to that. I can even limit the floor. So I don't want I don't want too much rumble gunk below 50 hertz. So I can adjust that right here. Does this mess with phase too much? The cutoff is essentially a brick wall. Uh yeah, kinda. You know? Stylistically, sure. Yeah. It can be weird, but when you add things back together, it actually comes together really nicely. So yes, it does sort of by design in this case. Um, but again, we're trying to create something a little spacey, a little different, a little new, but that's a great question. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's, I don't know if our algorithm is doing it beyond 96 dB an octave, Tim, it might be. That's a good question. Most likely, yes, based on your bit. So in this case, probably it's probably, yeah, like 140 dB per octave. <laughs> All right. So this is going to be IGC uh, rhythm section freak. OK. And let's just start with that. Oh, and then, you know, then maybe we'll do a little random one. Let's, let's go into the break. Now, again, let's just say we did something random. So we did our own sweep here.
And this is what I was trying to explain before. Because we're only, it's, it's essentially a subtractive process, you're only going to hear what was selected, right? Now, rhythmically, it's not, it's not precise, but again, it's just something different. So I'm just gonna say this is sort of like, you know, sweep chaos, okay? So we can copy this to a new file. Oh shoot, did I not, uh, I don't know, I didn't copy the other one to a new file. Oh, darn it. I saved the rhythm section, but I didn't, or did I? I didn't, I gotta redo that. Oh, flargle gargle. Okay, that's all right. We have 13 minutes. Okay, this is uh, IGC break sweep random. And uh, what did I do that on section two? Where's section two? Do we do section one and section three? Oh no, I resaved it as something else. You dope. Oh. Yes, idiot. Okay. Copy to new. That's what I wanted. Let's go back to this. And this is section two. Save as. Section two. Yes. is here. Okay. And this is IGC rhythm freak. Okay. All right. And let's go back to the multi-track. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. So now what you could essentially do is we can start to lay these things in and Let's go ahead and start with this one here. And this should be, show is this not showing me the snapping lines? There we go. Okay. Now again, maybe I want this whole thing, the original, to slightly, and, and I'll drop the amplitude first before I even start. Maybe I actually want this to play, but maybe it's sort of a gradual or somewhat gradual uh, reveal. And it's additive, so we're going to be adding the same frequency on top of the same thing. But just to give you an idea, saw what I was just doing there, I just added a little uh, analog delay to this so that it wouldn't be an abrupt cutoff. So what's happening is the full frequency program material is starting to delay uh, t -t 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 in eighth notes. And while that sort of dark, muddy rhythm section is kind of allowing it to kind of build up and come together. So let's play that again. At this point, we could take something like uh, where's the first? What do I call the first one? Sweep section. So we could snap this in there. All right. 
Let's just see what this is going to sound like. It's going to be a little weird, but maybe I take the rhythm one and I duplicate this underneath it as well. So again, adding, playing with some delays, this would be an opportunity to, sorry, I'm running out of time here, where maybe we uh, adjust different parameters of the delay in this case. So I might want to affect the wet output of this section, getting a little sort of heavy handed on the, uh, on the output there. So this is um, whatever the de that default 24% is the value at the, at the top. So maybe we have it start, you know, like 2% and it gradually increases. And I just do that so that it, it kind of has that tail at the end before it gets to that little sweep section. So that might sound something like this. And in fact, let's do a little more feedback. This might get a little nuts. And trash it even more. Let's do a slightly wider spread. Let's hear what that sounds like. Let's see if we can do even more feedback. So now you're getting the idea, right? OK. And this is going to be synth orc. And I'm going to do a little additive, a little more synthesis in here, playing uh, uh, the Kurzweil. I think it's input 7. Let's see. See if I can change this camera real quick. I do this for you. Okay, let's see. Video. Uh, I think it's. It's not the Brio. Which one is it? Is it this one? Where is it? The Brio. That's the Brio. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right, so let's start to add. We're going to add some of that maybe at the break or right after the break for our final. Uh, there's not really much after the break, is there? Very short song we made here. OK. Let's see. Let's just play it, and I'll, I'm just going to go in where I feel. OK, here we go.
Okay. Clearly, I'm going to have to fade that one out a little sooner. See, I told you, sometimes he doesn't have an ending because this was meant to kind of loop around back to the beginning again into that, which, by the way, you never even heard that section. The actual song starts out like this. Okay, we didn't even get to that. Okay, so uh, we're going to just gradually fade this one out and let that synth bit take over. And maybe this needs a little affecting too. Probably needs a little bit of EQ as well. Let's just hear what that sounds like. Okay, it's even getting a little bit of a sweep in itself right there. Didn't realize that. Okay, and the final. on Ultra. Our last minute and 30 seconds. An unreleased Fred Fung original. Okay, I'm going to switch the camera back, by the way. Okay, there we go. Bye, everybody. See you next time.